What up guys? I am Kelly Wolf and I hate you all. Yeah. Yeah. I started music because mostly my father was into it when I was a kid when he was a kid rather. And then he had me and didn't pursue it. That being said, I really liked it. It's my always a getaway for me. When I was going through something dark or upset, hate this person, love this person, going through a breakup, music was always there for me. So I wanted to abandon myself. And it was hard to find other people that had the same drive and passion that I did. All I wanted to do was be get into music and how else could I do it by myself other than hip hop. I wasn't much of a hip hop fan. I actually kind of hate rap. But then I found the Insane Clown Posse, and they're a combination of rap, rock, and they're funny to me. So I started liking them, and then I just started, I saw what they did, and I wanted to make music of my own. Kind of following the same footsteps as them, but I, without the painted face. I started when I was like, what, six, 15 or 16 years old. I want to say I was a sophomore in high school. And I used to, me and a couple friends, we'd all just get together, we'd rap. And we actually made our very first CD. And it was called the Mental Masturbation, and we passed it out all in high school. And actually, we ended up uh, selling a hundred copies. That's what dead ass what it was called, Mental Masturbation. <laughs> we sold one hundred copies. We used to take old CDs, my parents' CD collection. We'd take DVDs that no one watches, and we just print up the cover and the, tr the track listing, and we just ten bucks, a thousand dollars. We ended up buying our own studio I set up that way, and just just kept grinding, just kept doing what we loved to do. We got. Started getting shows booked when I was 16, and my brother Kobe, aka Kid Savage, uh, started doing uh, shows together under the band Angels of Death. And our very first show was at the Living Room in Providence. And ironically, it was a, 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 a venue that my father used to play when he was a kid. So it's kind of like living in his shoes. Eventually, we just kept doing it. We kept going, working hard. A lot of my friends stopped doing it. I continue to doing it because I just love what they do. It's like a getaway for me. I'm angry. I can vent. I'm happy. I can let the mic know. I'm upset. I can vent. It's just like it's more like a therapy to me, and I love it. And as I continue, I end up getting signed to this label called Flipside Entertainment out of Providence, Rhode Island. Johnny Armani was the guy that uh, was running Flipside Entertainment. He signed me. This is a couple of friends of mine that have done music together over the course of the figure out if I started at 16, I'm 28 now, the last 12 years. Once I was signed to Flipside Entertainment, there was a Cypher series called the Heat 16, where we get to choose any instrumental we want. It could be original, it could be a remix of something, and just write 16, and we shoot a video for it in different, various locations. Mine was in Boston. I used the uh, Loud, I think, I don't know if it's louder. I like my music. Loud by uh, Mac Miller. To be honest, I hated Mac Miller, but I love that beat. And I personally thought I could just crush him on his own beat and do something fresh, and that's what I did. It was cool because I, it's my first time I was signed, and then uh, we started putting together an EP called uh, Seeing Red. I wanted my brother, Kobe, on that project, and he was trying to tell me I couldn't, and I only could do what he said. I wasn't having that. No one tells me what I can and can't do, especially when it comes to my music, but I kind of let it slide. And then he got us on a, on a radio show, I think it's called Music Fiend. But uh, <laughs> it was actually cool, I was having fun. We got a Call her in, a call in by uh, a rapper named Sticks Diamond Eyes. He's out of Providence, I guess. Previously, he was signed to Johnny Armani. He kind of just talked trash about him the entire time. More or less saying he screwed uh, Johnny Armani, screwed him out of money. Would say he'd do, would he try to dip his fingers into everything creative. Pretty much what I saw him doing with uh, when he was trying to tell me I couldn't have work with my brother on the entire project. I'm hearing this guy say out loud. So obviously he has done this before in the past. Sticks ended up saying, you know, respect all the all the guys that he did sign. A lot of you do have talent, but if you want to make it in this music industry, I'd jump off, I'd jump off this label, he would call it, because he's only going to screw you out of money. And then that's kind of how that radio show ended. And I went home, I had a lot to think about. He ended up booking me a show in Fall River that had zero promotion, actually zero work into it at all. I ended up showing up to the day of the show and the venue didn't even know we were, there was a show going on. So 
that's when I was like, really? I'm all done with this guy. But there was confusion. The show ended up happening. But the only people there were all the rappers that showed up. So at that point, I'm like, this guy's kind of trash. And then uh, these guys tattooed in my throat. Their names, they're called the Axe Murder Boys, Young, Wicked, and Bones Dub. Backstory, they got signed to Insane Clown Posse's record label. And because they were two brothers, they're honestly my definition of what rap should be. I looked up to these guys since I was a kid. And I actually uh, did a lot of shows with them and becoming you know, friends with them. And I actually, they ended up taking me on my very first tour in 2014. This is why I was signed to Flipside. When I got that tour booked, Johnny Amani told me I could not go on that tour because I didn't have the funds for it and I didn't have any merch. I had my own merch, but he was telling me nothing was produced by Flipside. And if I went on tour, he'd have to take a percentage of whatever I would be making on the road. At that point, I said, nope, I can't do anything with my brother. Who are you to tell me what I can and can't do, especially with my music? And now you're just telling me I can't go on tour to begin with because I haven't released anything or whatever he had in his head. And on top of that, any money that I'd make on the road, you'd want a percentage of it, and you're not coming on this tour with me. I dropped him like a sack of potatoes and just said, Stayed independent. Went on the tour, my very first tour, Memphis, Tennessee, Hartford, Connecticut, Worcester, Massachusetts. We did one in Pennsylvania, I forget the venue. Saugat, Illinois, Oklahoma City, Topeka, Kansas. Two more, and then there was a Denver, uh, I, think it was, I don't think it was Denver, but it was in Colorado. Fort Collins, no, Fort Worth, Texas. I, I kind of, might lie, I forgot. When we got off tour, I'll be straight with you, I did not make much money in any way, shape, or form. In fact, I ended up, it was more like a vacation to me. Doing what I love to do. I got two and a half weeks out of work. It was a vacation. It was awesome. I met a lot of new people, it was cool. But I had to make up because I had bills to pay, so I ended up taking, I almost, I took a whole year off of rapping in general. It was one of those, I spent a lot of money. I took a lot of time out of working, so I just had no time to do any kind of rap. I just had to work every single day like a normal human being. Took two years off, actually. And then uh, me and uh, this girl I dated for six years, we broke up. I ended up moving back into my parents' crib, and I just had all my equipment still, and it was something I loved to do. I just started up again, just do my own independent thing, no, no label, no need for that. Just to kind of start my own circle of friends that still want to do this. Paid off. I got the, for the first time in my life, I got to play the Palladium main stage. And I've already played the Palladium in Worcester three times now. So that was a, you know, a goal of mine since I was 14, 15, 16 years old that I wanted to play that same stage where I've seen some of my favorite bands. Black Label Society, Insane Clown Posse, Twisted, you know, Axe Murder Boys, Low Key. Uh, a bunch of, it's a bunch of big underground music that I love. That's the genre I stick to and I love it. Majority of my music that I push out is always going to be on Spotify, Apple Music, and Google Play. Uh, on Spotify I have a uh, one particular track called Can't Handle It featuring Young Wicked and Bones Dub. These guys! They broke over a thousand plays. I think it's like 1400 to be exact. Well not exact but in the, ball, in the ballpark. And I've uh, released a video for Headspace, off a single off of Scatterbrain, that uh, Zach Kohler, my youngest brother, video entrepreneur. That makes sense, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he shot that video for me. That collectively actually got over 4,000 views. I have a couple of videos that all broke at least 5, 5K, which is Savage. Based on Quickie number, I think it was four. Yeah. Headspace, Savage 2. That's dope. Yeah. Can't handle it. I had just did my verse for that. Oh, and uh, what's the one I did for uh, Sarah? Now I pray. That that's almost hit thousand, but that's fine with me, man. Eight hundred. That's eight hundred people that saw me going through something. I, mean, it's, I, I wear my heart on my sleeve with my music. It's one of those. If I'm going through something, you guys are gonna know it because you just listen to it. At the end of the day, I hope it helps you guys. It's like you're going through something, you can listen to it, hey, you're not the only one. Everyone has demons, they fight. I unleash it in the mic. Hey, that rhymes. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you guys keep coming back. I hope you guys love the music. KellyWolfMusic.com. I got more coming. Oh, and uh, before I forget, uh, speaking of tours, I'm going on a tour again. My first tour since 2014, uh, the Psychedelic Tour with Skiru. We're gonna be in Massachusetts, Manchester, New Hampshire, Connecticut, Indiana, New York, Denver, Colorado, two or three more states 
that I can't think of off the top of my head, but it's still gonna be pretty cool. It's gonna be uh, in April for 20 events. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my little life, my music life anyway. I fry cook during the day and then I record music at night.